Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game Dice Throne Season 1 Rerolled. Look at that. This was sent to me by Dice Throne, and is designed by Nate Chatelier, Manny Trembley, and Gavin Brown. Welcome to Dice Throne, a heart-pumping, fast-playing game of skillful card play and dice manipulation that will have your game nights cheering. Let me show you how to play. So right off the bat, one thing that's really nice about this game is these really nice trays sorted by character. Yeah, that's why the box is so big, because it's got this, got all these nice trays. Um, for the sake of uh, examples, since uh, the Treant and the Ninja are the new characters to this set, uh, I will show uh, how to play based off those characters. Each character comes in a tray like this. A nice board you can unfold like so. They also come with an FAQ, uh, a complexity level, and also what status tokens they need. This game can be played uh, with more than two. I, however, recommend, I think the best version of this is one-on-one, -on -one. Um, but there are different rules for team battles, like two-on-two, -two, or a uh, King of the Hill three-player mode. So there are variations, um, but I find I prefer a uh, two-player mode as the most fun. Um, you start with 50 health each and two combat points. And this game is all about knocking the other player out by getting all their health. The game is played different phases, starting with an upkeep phase, income, and then main of three offensive roll phases, another main phase and discard phase, um, which is a lot simpler than it sounds. This board here details all the different abilities you have. And in order to trigger an ability, you need to roll a combination of dice. So some of them require specific symbols, like Death Blossom here is three swords and two shuriken. If you roll that, you have to roll five dice and do a formula of damage, uh, one per sword and two per, plus two per shuriken. And if you roll uh, an alien, that's not an alien, a ninja mask, uh, this attack becomes undefendable, which we'll get into later. There's also stuff based on straights, like a small straight or a large straight. The large straight of five dice, meaning in, in ascending numerical order, uh, you gain two ninjutsu icons and deal eight damage. All characters also have an ultimate, in this case, assassinate. Uh, you roll five different ninjutsu icons. You inflict delayed poison on two chosen opponents and gain smoke bomb and deal 10 uh, undefendable damage. Now, before we get into all that, let's just get into how a turn works. First, you upkeep phase, some status effects do certain things, but let's ignore that for now. Then, on your turn, you get one CP. CP, or combat points, are used to play different cards. And you also draw a card. You start with four cards, you draw a card each turn, your hand limit is six. Now this here tells you how many CP it costs to play the card. You can also, at any time, discard a card to get a CP if you need more CP. There are different types of cards, like for example, triple up here, uh, you pay two CP, it's an instant action, and that lets you just draw three cards. A main phase action like this costs 2 CP, and this lets you inflict delayed poison on a chosen opponent. For the ninja, what delayed poison does is it rece they receive 3 undefendable damage at the end of their turns. A player afflicted with this token removes it at the conclusion of their turn and then receives 3 damage. And you can stack it twice. There's a stack limit for each status effect. Uh, another type of card is the upgrade card. An upgrade card will let you improve your abilities on your board. So Poison Blade 2 here, if I spend 1 CP, I can upgrade and place the card here. Now, the card will do uh, have a better effect. There are also cards you can play during the roll phase, which we're about to get into right now. After you've played your cards in the main phase using combat points, then you take your custom dice here, every character has different dice, and you roll them. Now in this case, okay, you have to decide which dice you want to keep. I'll keep this one, and I'll roll again. Okay, not much better than before. However, it is a small straight, so I'll keep that for now. And then you get one final roll. All right, that is actually a large straight. Once you've done your three rolls, uh, then if you wanted, you could use cards like this, or sometimes cards can interrupt your roll phase, depending on what they say. Like try, try again here, you spend one CP, you could re-roll up to two dice if you really needed to. Um, so there are different cards like that. But let's say I finished my rolls and now I can trigger an attack. 
In this case, I'll do a large straight. Two, three, four, five, six, Shadow Fang. I gain two ninjutsu icons and then I deal eight damage. These ninjutsu icons are useful because they're passive status effects. You put them on your character and after attacking, a player may spend a token and roll a die to add more damage. On one to three, you add one damage. On four to five, add two. On six, you can add two, or, uh, inflict delayed poison or make it undefendable. Uh, so these can make your attacks more powerful. Now, when I declare an attack, in this case, eight damage, the other character, whoever you're fighting, whoever you're attacking, gets to do a defense roll. So here's the Treant's board. It's a completely different board. Uh, also, this Treant has a passive. Uh, during your upkeep phase, grow a spirit. Treants can use spirits to do different effects. Uh, I'm not going to go into all the details. Um, but, yeah, so the treant here would then, after, once you declare your attack on them, then they can use their defensive roll. In this case, it's rooted. Uh, you roll three dice. So, let's do that. All right. It says here, you prevent uh, one for every wood you rolled, and plus one for every uh, what the hell is that? Like the the tree tree spiral. Um, anyway, so that means I get to block two damage. Uh, if I rolled two leaves, I could grow a spirit, which I could use later. So that means Treant would take six damage, blocking two of it. Once you've done your attack, you can play any other main phase cards. What's nice about these is that. They're color-coded to tell you when you can play them. Blue cards are in the main phase. Uh, orange cards are in the roll phase. Red cards are during our instant. And then once you're done, you sell any cards you have beyond six, uh, getting CP for them, and then the next player goes. And that's pretty much the gist of it, is you're playing cards to upgrade your board, uh, get different effects. Uh, I don't necessarily want to show you all the cards, because it's kind of fun to discover them on your own. But this is kind of the gist. But let's show you a different character just to see how different these characters can be. The tree end here, while the ninja is all about doing poison and increasing your attacks and also the smoke bomb, which can uh, block, uh, let you uh, block an attack, there's the tree end, who has all these different sorts of spirits. Uh, spirits you can use to either reroll dice or heal and gain CP. You can use them to uh, add attacks to your mo or damage to your attacks. Uh, there are barbed vines, which um, when you uh, 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 inflict barbed vine on an opponent, uh, they receive one damage for each roll attempt beyond the first, so they start getting hit if they have to re-roll. Wellspring, you can, you know, heal half of uh, uh, one dice during the main phase. Um, there's all these different effects. So the Treant is kind of more about uh, using these spirits for different abilities. The only thing about this game that I thing is a little annoying is there are different damage types uh, there's a whole chart there's normal damage undefendable pure collateral and ultimate ultimate damage is when you trigger your ultimate attack and it can't be blocked uh, normal damage can be defended avoided and modified undefendable uh, that's when it has a red circle around the number can uh, not be defended but can be modified Pure damage, though, is a special type of undefendable. This is all just, it's just, I think this is a real annoying factor on what's otherwise a pretty elegant game. But that's pretty much the gist. You roll your dice, play cards, attack each other. If you've played the original Dice Throne, you'll see that this box features six other characters from the original set. Uh, we got Paladin, Monk, Shadow Thief, Pyromancer, Moon Elf, and Barbarian. I'm not gonna go through each one, especially if you are already are familiar with Dice Throne, but they all play differently and all feature not only custom dice, but different status effects and different um, complexity levels and abilities. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much the game. So I had played Dice Throne a couple times before and I always really enjoyed it. This remastered set is really nice, but let's dive into the gameplay first for those of you who have never played it. First up, I love how easy it is to jump into this since, you know, yeah, there are like, special tokens for each character, but honestly, a lot of it only matters if you're able to roll those specific techniques anyway, so you can kind of just jump in and learn as you go. The classic, you know, Yahtzee style of rolling, you know, three times is always fun on its own, but combined with the fun, that lean, but, you know, mean card play system, the battles, are, they really sing, they're really fun. Uh, I've always liked the mechanic of discarding cards you don't need to give you more points to play better cards, and I really love the upgrade system where you can, you know, 
make your attacks more effective just by putting a card on the board. Uh, and of course, there are plenty of fun sort of counterattack cards. Like, I didn't show them, but there's ones like, oh, make your opponent, like, change a die, or you can change a die value on your dice to perfect your combos. Uh, they're, they're a lot of fun. The only thing I mentioned earlier that I found kind of unnecessary, and it's a minor thing, is the whole damage system. Like, I'm sorry, you don't need five different types of damage. Normal, undefendable, pure, collateral, ultimate. A lot of it is circumstantial at best. So it's like, why not just... Just like, okay, some of it can be modified or avoided, but not defended or defended, but avoided. It, it's just it's just a pain in the ass. Uh, considering also how elegant and intuitive the rest of the game is, it's just kind of a shame that this one thing is like kind of a drag. Uh, but that's just one minor complaint in what's otherwise a really fun dice slash card combat game. And then let's talk about the presentation. The storage is honestly fantastic. It is a big box, but the characters... I love that they fold nicely into trays, can be put away really nicely and neatly. The two new heroes, the Treant and Ninja, they're both fun. Uh, yeah, if you've never played Dice Throne, I think this is a great place to start. It's gorgeous, it's a lot of fun, comes with eight characters, that's plenty of characters to start. Uh, and honestly, you don't need more than that, you can get more, but that's a pretty good set right there. I've also been very impressed with the balancing in this. I feel like every game I've played has been relatively close at the end so uh that and that's kind of hard to do for a lot of these games where you can mix and match characters so yeah if you like these kind of beat each other up sort of gotcha like attacking games or ha i do this attack i block it i play this card i highly recommend this it's super fun and this is a great overall package